I'm Steve Rose. What sets us apart is that green is not just a buzzword like a lot of people use. Green is an operative word and it really is easy to do. I'm gonna share with you my secrets on how to do this at home. I believe that people want to live this way, they just don't know how to go about it. And that's the whole purpose of the show, to teach you how to do it. I'm gonna show you the pathway to green living and organic cooking. Welcome to The Organic Rose. Sean. Hey, Steve. How are you? Oh, it's great to be here. So good to have you. Yeah, this is fantastic. I heard you're going to start showing me how to make some wonderful, amazing pizzas. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, pizza's kind of been a passion of mine for about 30 years. And uh, I'm a painting contractor by day. But uh, when you do that, you tend to have to need a night, a night job. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I did pizza for years doing that. And eventually, it turned into kind of a hobby that I do now and to do a little catering and mostly for friends and family because once they start tasting my pizza. And it is out of this world, yeah. I can tell you that. So uh, when it comes to pizza, there's a lot of different uh, dough recipes out there. So you can look on the internet if you've got a good cookbook that's got one in there. Try it out and fool around with it. You can add herbs to your dough. Um, you can add a bunch of different things or you can just keep it straight and simple like this one. Uh, when I make dough, I like to uh, put it in the refrigerator overnight actually in the bowl so if you want you can use it the day you make it but I find it tastes better if you give it a 24 hour or even a 48 hour wow, rise. that's a long time yeah and you just cover it and you put it in your refrigerator and it slowly starts to bloom and that that the fact that it's going slower is adding to the complexity of the flavor so that's what I've got here so we're pretty much ready to assemble. Does that, question for you real yeah. quick, does yeah. leaving it in the refrigerator for that many hours, how does that affect the elasticity of the dough? Well, I actually find that it, um, it builds a little more strength. If you, a lot of times, if you make dough fresh and you put it on your cutting board and you're ready to start uh, right. playing with it, you'll pick it up and it'll tear or it'll feel real loose and hard to work with. And this way, when it's cool from the refrigerator and it's had that slow development, it's much more pliable and easier to work with. And uh, a little secret, most good pizza restaurants are doing that. They have it all hidden in their walk-in. So <laughs> that's a little tip. That's secret number one we're yes. getting from you. Yeah, okay. there's a few little secrets and there's a couple other ones coming up. <laughs> all right, so this pizza is uh, basically a California version of a margarita pizza. And every ingredient that we're gonna use is either locally sourced or it's organic, or I grew it myself. It's that locally sourced. Awesome, that's like great. Like these great Anna Asa heirloom tomatoes that we're gonna use. So the first thing that we're gonna do, oh, and the other thing I was gonna point out is none of the pizzas that we're gonna see today are gonna have any pizza sauce, no red sauce. Oh. Right, well, you don't need a red sauce if you've got- If you've got beautiful fresh <laughs> beautiful tomatoes, tomatoes like that, right? right? All right, so here's what we're gonna do to start. First of all, we're gonna take some really good olive oil. Okay. And we're just gonna get that on there. And the olive oil is actually gonna be, sort of be the sauce in this case. Oh, nice, I like that. Okay, we don't wanna use too much of it. And then we just wanna spread it around like you would a regular uh, tomato sauce or whatever kind of sauce. Is that one of your paint brushes? Actually it is. <laughs> um, I don't get a lot done with this paintbrush. <laughs> all right, so we got that all over there, okay. So the second thing we're gonna do as we're gonna grab some of this fresh garlic. Yes. Yep, oh yeah. And we wanna put this right on top and we just kinda of spread it around here and break it up really good because you don't want more, one of your friends more, to- More, more, we like that. You don't want one of your friends to get the one big massive garlic <laughs> bite, right? Okay. I'm gonna do more, a little more, bit more. more. It feels man. good with the tomatoes. Yeah. And, you know, so, okay. All right, then once you've got it on there, I kinda just do this. You know, to evenly distribute it. All right. Okay. So now we're going to put on the cheese. And this is another little pizza secret. If you put the garlic on underneath the cheese, it's going to cook better and it's going to, you're really going to taste it. If you put it on top of the cheese, you put it in the oven, the garlic could burn. Yep. And burnt garlic is bitter. All right. So now we're going to put on some cheese. This is fresh uh, mozzarella and Another little pizza secret is you mix in a little jack cheese with this. And- uh, What does that do? Well, actually it gives it a little more of a complex flavor, but also I find that it, uh, 
it gives you that stringiness. You know, like when you pull the pizza slice off your yeah, thing yeah, and you get yeah. that long thing. So the mixing of the two cheeses it, uh, helps with that. So that's another little pizza secret. All right, so we're going to get a little bit more there. Okay. That smells really good. It's not even cooked yet. Nope. Okay, we're going to get just a little bit more. So the key star of this pizza is really going to be these Ana Asa heirloom tomatoes that I grow. So you don't want to overcomplicate the pizza because you want to really get the true flavor of the tomato. But those go on fresh after the pizza's done. So oh. what we're going to do now is we've already got the two kinds of cheeses in a mix on here now. And I'm actually going to take some of this fresh Parmesan and we're going to add a little bit of this. It gives it a little saltiness. Salt nice. and tomatoes, right? That's a good combination. But not too much. We don't want to overpower anything. And I'm going to take some nice feta, which we're, we're also going to use when the pizza's done. We're going to put some fresh stuff on there. But I like to have a little bit in here so it'll just kind of cook in. Very good. Yeah. And if you forget the tomatoes, this is still a pretty good tasty pie. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Okay. So that's what's ready to go into the oven. We're going to cook that in for a little bit. When it's done, we're going to rest it, and then we're going to add the toppings and finish off the pizza. So it's another little trick. Before you put the pizza in the oven, you want to give it a little shake so you know it's going to slide off. Otherwise, you might have a bad day. <laughs> so, so why is it sliding like that? Well, one of the things that some people use on their pizza peel is flour and you can do that a lot of people do it i like to use cornmeal because the cornmeal kind of acts like little ball bearings underneath the dough mm -hmm. and it allows it to slide right off easy it does give it a little bit of crunch when you eat the pizza as well so i kind of like that it was a childhood thing and i've just stuck with it all right Hey. Nice. Okay, well, let's see. Let's put our cover back on there. Okay. Okay, so the pizza's in, it's cooking. It's gonna take just a little bit. Uh, I like to cook, this pizza oven goes up to 900 degrees. I find that's a little too hot. So I've got it down to 750, which is what I think is the sweet spot for a pizza. All right. What do you think? It's time to pull this baby. Yes. All right. I can't wait. Oh man, it's beautiful. Oh, if you guys could smell this. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. It's just bubbling. Oh man, okay. That is a thing of beauty. <laughs> that is, and boy, I tell you, I want to eat it now, but we can't. What are you doing painting houses? Ah, uh, well, I know, I know. All right, so the pizza is actually not ready yet. So, number one, the pizza needs to cool. Like I mentioned earlier, if you cut into it now, it's just going to be a sloppy mess. That's no good. So it's going to cool, then we can slice it. But we also have to finish mm. it off with our to final toppings. But before we do that, we're going to do another little pizza trick. Steve's going to go ahead and take this olive oil, and we're just going to olive oil the crust. It looks pretty, and actually, you'll really enjoy the, eating the crust a little bit better with the olive oil on it. Hmm. All right. It gives it a nice sheen, too. Kind of like it wants to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just like us. <laughs> All right. So the olive oil is actually the makeup for the pizza. Right. Look how pretty that is. It's gorgeous, Sean. Oh, God. That's just great. Okay. All right. So now we'll just let that sit for just a little bit before we do anything else to it. We're just going to let it rest? Yeah, for... we okay. can let it rest. And... Let's let it rest and talk yeah. about your day job a little bit. Okay. So how long have you been painting, paint, how long have you been painting for? Well, uh, 31 years, actually. Wow. Yeah. And that's about the same time I've been making pizzas as well. 
And uh, I actually was working at a pizza restaurant, and these painters would come in after their shift, <laughs> and they would, you know, sit at the bar and have pizza and you know what else, and then <laughs> they would just stay there all night. And one day they asked me to come work on a job with them, and that started my painting career right there. That's funny. Yeah. So, but I always stuck with both. Um, uh, I'm a contractor now. I have my own business, and. Uh, Maybe when I get tired of uh, climbing extension ladders, maybe I have another business venture up my sleeve. <laughs> I think that should be sooner than later myself. I I if you can produce product like that. Yeah. But yes. uh, I have to say, I've, I've noticed uh, in my 30 years of painting, uh, there's been a lot of changes in the way paint's been manufactured, particularly in California. Um, we have the uh, EPA, of course, that's nationally, and then we have the California Air Resources Board. And when I first started painting, it was not, it was not good. Um, there were a lot of paint thinners, there were a lot of vapors, <laughs> there was lacquer, uh, really nobody cared what was going into the product. It was just, let's make paint that works. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, it made people sick and it wasn't good for um, the environment. So about 15 or so years ago, changes started to happen. Paint started getting reformulated and um, it became, it was starting to get a lot better. Problem was during that period, um, nobody really kind of knew exactly how it was going to go. So some paints didn't come out so good. <laughs> yeah. But now, uh, I would say most places that you go to, you can pretty much expect to be buying fairly green paint. Um, you don't have to go in like you used to, where you'd have to go and say, I'd like to get the low VOC or I want the Enviro whatever paint. You don't really have to say that. Most of them have just said, you know what, we're just going to go green on everything. Awesome. Yeah. So, and that's great uh, for everybody. It's great for me as a contractor. I have to work with the oh, stuff. Sure, and right? you're working with it every day. Yeah, and uh, so I don't want to be, you know, have it affecting me. And also, the people at home, if you're going to paint your house or whatever, you don't have to worry about it. You know, I mean, just open a window and all, that's always good. But for the most part, it's pretty safe these days. That's cool. Well... Shall we? I think we can. Okay. okay. So let's do this. Let's see. All righty. We'll get this pan. Okay. You want to slide that on onto yeah. the pan? All right. All right. So this is where it gets good. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start putting these tomatoes on. So we're going to. Just go ahead and decorate. Oh, they're just kind of just sinking right into the melted cheese. Right. Beautiful. And the pizza and the cheese are still hot enough where they're going to sort of warm up the tomatoes. But not actually cook but them. But not really cook them. So you're really going to get that burst of fresh tomato flavor um, as opposed to, you know, if you ordered it before, the flavor gets kind of cooked out in the, in the oven. Yeah. So in this case, they're going to be bright and they're going to pop and you'll see. And the other thing that's good is since we didn't go over complicated on the other ingredients, you're really going to just be showcasing the tomato itself. The tomato and the good cheese right. and, and the great crust. Right. And, sim and simple is always better anyway. It's very simple. And we're almost there. Oops. Can't do that. All right. Okay. Oh, that looks okay. gorgeous. Yeah. So that's about it. All right, so we'll save the rest. Okay. Okay, so now uh, I think we're going to add uh, some of this feta cheese. And that's probably going to melt. This is so hot, that's probably going to melt right in too, huh? A little bit, and it also looks pretty. Yeah. So, so we're going to try that. Oh, yeah. Okay. We don't need to go too much there. Okay. You're quite the minimalist when it comes to pizzas. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> All right, then we do a little Parmesan. I like to have a little fresh stuff on it. Not, not a lot. Like I said, we don't need to overpower anything. Okay. So, this is just about done. Now we're going to put some fresh chopped parsley on it. Is that curly leaf or yes, flat leaf? Yes, it's curly leaf. Okay. I just find it it's, just seems to work better with this one. Okay. There you have it. That's beautiful. Oh, this dough came out great. Oh, it's cutting so nicely. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Super sharp. Look at that. See, and it doesn't run all over the place, That's right? That's perfect. Okay. Oh, this is 
smells so good. I thought I was going to get this half, and you're going to get that. Yeah. Half. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got to talk to these guys. I got money. I got money from all of them. <laughs> I think we should try this. Uh -huh. Oh God. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Look at how airy the dough yeah, is that too. That's great. Yeah, that is great. Okay, let's do this. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> that is so good. That is good. That is good. Oh. Mm -hmm. That is good. Okay. This okay. is screaming for a glass of red wine. Oh. Yeah, you know what? I'm going back in. <laughs> mm. So you know something's a passion of yours if you can't be the if you're the first person you can't wants to eat it. Mm. Mm. This oven does a fantastic job. Yeah. But I have to tell you that it's only for outdoor use. Do not use any propane devices inside of your house. It has to be done outside. To keep it nice and safe. That is so good, Sean. <sighs> you know, it is. <laughs> it really is. And it's such simple ingredients. And the crew, they're just like, everybody's salivating all over them. Like, I want some of that pizza. Right. And the neighbors can probably smell in the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next one on top, on tap? Okay. So the next one, we're going to kind of stay in the same uh, sort of a vegetarian uh, vein. Uh, but this one is has more of a Mediterranean flair to it. And we're going to start off with the same olive oil and garlic for the base. Can't go but wrong with that. after that, the toppings really get extreme and a lot of it honestly can come right out of your garden so that'll be fun that's going to be a good one and uh that one also finishes nicely <laughs> i'll bet <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started all right All right, number two. All right. Well, so if you saw the first one, that was uh, a, basically a vegetarian pizza with nice, beautiful tomatoes. This one is more of a Mediterranean style. It's also vegetarian, but <clears throat> we're really going to go over the top with this one. This one has a lot of different ingredients here. It's very tasty, and it's beautiful to look at. But I know you're not a vegetarian because I have seen <clears throat> you rip into a cowboy's steak this would <laughs> yeah well if you are a meat lover if you tried this you this might convert you <laughs> so anyway so this one like the last one uh is going to start off with the olive oil as the base so we're not going to use any tomato sauce today we're just using this this time hmm. liquid gold the good stuff right <clears throat> so we're gonna put that there we'll spread it around Okay. And you don't perforate your dough. I've seen people perforate their dough so it doesn't form bubbles. But mm -hmm. with that last one, there was no need for that. Yeah. Um, you know, the way I make the dough, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of trouble with bubbles. It does happen, um, but I just haven't had that trouble. So, you know, I, don't, I haven't found the need to do it. All right. So I'll put a lot of garlic on this. Yeah, lots of yep. garlic. Yep. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. I might even put a little yeah, more. Yeah, thank the you. Heck? Yeah. It's never too much garlic. Yeah. And this is another kind of um, pizza where you have all these different ingredients, and some of them are subtle, and some of them aren't. Like the Kalamata olives are definitely not subtle. But when you have the olive oil on the bottom, and you just have the garlic, you don't have anything overpowering down there that's going to blow out your palate. So you're really going to be able to taste the difference between these subtle ingredients and some not so subtle. Okay. Subtle. Now <coughs> we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take these tomatoes and we're actually going to put them on underneath the cheese. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they're going to just kind of cook, and but they're not going to burn. or. So the cheese is going to melt over the mm -hmm. tomatoes and then end up cooking the tomatoes, correct? That's right. That's pretty neat. So and what kind of these tomatoes again? These are... Uh, Organic heirloom Anna Asa tomatoes. They're little cherry tomatoes and they're little flavor bombs. They just, they really have a lot of flavor. Okay. 
And where did your tomato growing, where did you learn that from? Well, actually, it started with my folks. Uh, my mom and my stepfather, they actually um, sell these on the side of the road in, huh. in, our, in my town. So they'll have a little starter kit. They'll grow them. Then they'll put them in six-inch pots. They come over to my house and build a big greenhouse there. And then when they're completely root-bound and ready for people to plant in their garden, they'll set up a little stand and people come by and they've been coming for years and uh, buying the plants and then people put them in the ground and then they grow wonderful tomatoes nice. like this. Actually, like 14 different varieties I think we had last year. So Wow. Yeah. But just one today. All right, so now we're going to put a little cheese on it. Go ahead, Steve. I want to play yeah, too. Go ahead, yeah. Sneak in there. Yeah. All right. Okay. This is going to be so good. So, on this one, <clears throat> we're going to add a little feta in there too. Um, it tastes good, it has a little salt factor to it, and uh, it also, um, it's pretty, right? And that'll kind of melt into everything. So if you see me disappear off set for about two minutes, it's yeah. probably because I'm going to get a couple glasses of red wine for <laughs> us. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, we're almost getting to that point. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go in with some uh, bell pepper here. And uh, when I cook pizzas, you know, product placement is everything. If you know me, you know that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do that. Now we're going to take some of these. We're going to go around. Now that's really pretty. Right. It's kind of artistic and, uh, I don't know, some places, you know, you've watched some guys make pizzas at some places and they're just throwing stuff on there. I'm not really like that. And in the end it all ends up in, in your belly, but at least it'll look nice for a little while. All right. So at this point, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little shake so I know it's going to mm. slide off. If it didn't slide off, all these toppings would slide off. Uh -huh. And uh, that's not good. Okay, so we're gonna go with a little more of these. Okay. I mean, these just like your day job, you know, painting. I mean, I've seen you paint, and and I've seen your results, and you are a perfectionist. But it shows in the pizza making as well. Oh, thank you. I'm pretty darn good at pizza eating, <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, a little more of this. Some nice artichoke hearts. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. I think we'll stop He's there. Right there. No, it does, huh? All right. Yummy. Okay, looking good. Now, we're going to go in for some Kalamata olives. These are so, very strong. So, color. Yes. Pungency. Mm hmm. Wonderful flavor. Another, another element of saltiness. Right, right. You don't need this one, do you? No, I don't need this one. <laughs> so, all right, we should really cook the pizza, I think, here. Okay, let's get down. on. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, this is a pizza that, um, if you aren't a vegetarian, uh, this might make you a believer. Okay. And Let's this, start. again, we'll take, we're going to put this in at 750 degrees. Yep. For how long? Uh, Probably about uh, eight minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. And I think what we'll do uh, as a little insurance policy is I'm going to take a little bit of this. Sure. And this is something also that pizza restaurants will do. This is called topping cheese. It's not that big of a secret. But if you put a little bit on it, just a tiny bit, it's going to melt away and you're not going to really see it when it's done. But one thing it kind of does is it kind of holds the toppings together in case it does slip on the board and uh, everyone, everything won't slide off. So that's so, pizza glue. Kind of like that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, looks like we are ready to go in the oven. So here we go. All right. Okay, one final. Okay, we're rolling, wish me luck. So unfortunately, one of the things about making pizza is that it does make a mess. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay.
next time on The Organic Rose, we continue our pizza making adventure with part two of how to make the best pizza from scratch.